Have you ever caught yourself trapped in a worry cycle where one worry thought leads to another thing that you feel you need to worry about and then the next thing you know you're worried about the fact that you're worried? Welcome to the club. As someone who has struggled with worry and anxiety for pretty much most of my life, I've had the honor of truly seeing God bring healing and restoration in my mind when it comes to worry. And as I've studied the scriptures for years on this topic, I've learned three important questions to ask yourself when you feel worried that can help you to reframe your thinking to get off the crazy cycle of worry and experience God's joy and peace. I'll be sharing those three questions with you today in this video, so stay tuned. Welcome to Beloved Women with me, Christina Patterson, where we empower women in the love of Jesus Christ and the truth of God's word. If you are new here, welcome. Please be sure to subscribe so that you never miss a video. And for those of you returning, welcome back. For daily encouragement, weekly Bible study with me, and unlimited videos to grow your faith, I invite you to join the Beloved Women app. Currently, we are studying the book of Esther, and it has been great. I'd love for you to join us. So I'm um, bringing out my Bible today. And I'm turning to Matthew chapter 6. Jesus gives this amazing sermon in Matthew chapter 6 on worry. He starts with the words, do not worry. And then he continues to go on to give argument after argument after argument as to why we should live worry-free lives. Y'all, this text has meant so much to me when it comes to overcoming the worry and anxiety in my life. And I honestly wasn't really aware of how much anxiety was impacting me until I experienced severe postpartum anxiety after the birth of my second child, which I didn't even know was a thing until I was talking to um, like a maternal health professional and she was like listing out all the signs of someone with postpartum anxiety. And I was, I, when I tell you I checked off like nine of 10, I was like, oh my goodness. Uh, soon after that, I went to therapy and that was amazing <laughs> and helped out a lot and helped me to like actually look back on my life and see even as a child ways that I was coping with anxiety not knowing that I was struggling with it at the time but over my life the Lord just kept leading me back to Matthew chapter 6. Now you know it's serious when I bring out the big Bible y'all okay and I'm actually going to read the whole thing. Normally I don't do this because I don't want my videos to be too long but I don't even care this is like such an important scripture for anybody struggling with worry to read and know and study because it has helped set me free and I hope that it can do the same for you. So the text is Matthew chapter 6 verses 25 through 34 and honestly in college I remember memorizing this entire passage so that I would have it when I was walking to class or driving. I needed this text written on my heart so I could have it everywhere that I went. Like it was that serious. So, all right. Matthew chapter six, verses 25 through 34 says, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink or about your body, what you will wear. Isn't life more than food and the body more than clothing? Consider the birds of the sky. They do not sow or reap or gather into barns, yet your heavenly father feeds them. Aren't you worth more than they? Can any of you add one moment to his lifespan by worrying? And why do you worry about clothes? Observe how the wildflowers of the field grow. They don't labor or spin thread, yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was a Adorned like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and thrown into the furnace tomorrow, won't he do much more for you? Oh, you of little faith. So don't worry saying, what will we eat? Or what will we drink? Or what will we wear? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be provided for you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow because tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. All right, so I actually have a few videos about worry on this channel that I'll link below. Specifically, I have a video called How to Break the Worry Cycle that really breaks down this passage. But today, what I wanna do is I really wanna talk about the questions that Jesus asked in this text. Did you notice that he was asking a lot of questions where he gives the command, do not worry, but then he proceeds to ask specific 
questions. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. So as we discuss Jesus's approach and teaching to worry, in this video, we'll learn how we can easily get trapped in a worry cycle every time we do this one thing, how Jesus teaches us in Matthew 6 to reprogram our thinking to worry less, and three important questions to ask yourself when you feel worried to help calm your anxiety. No, no, actually, I thought about one more question. Okay, so it's going to be three questions and a bonus. But first, we need to understand the importance of asking the right questions. So if you've been paying any attention lately, you know that AI is like super popular now, specifically ChatGPT, where you can go in and you can pretty much ask the AI software anything that you want and get very detailed responses. So you can go into ChatGPT and ask it to create 10 video title ideas on growing your faith and it'll just boom, 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 spit it out. And there's so many more ways that you can use AI in this way. But those who will get the most out of this technology are the ones that know the importance of asking the right questions. Because the artificial intelligence is only as good as you're able to ask questions in a way that it can respond to. Because AI is still simply responding to you and your input. So if you want a good response, you have to ask a good question. And when I think about that and the importance of asking the right questions, I also think about Jesus. Because Jesus asked a lot of questions throughout his ministry. And many times he would ask questions to make a particular point. So in the Matthew chapter 6 text that we just read, we'll see numerous questions that Jesus is asking. In verse 25, he says, is life not more than food and the body more than clothing? Verse 26, he says, are you not more valuable than they? Talking about the birds of the air. In verse 27, he says, which of you by being anxious can add a single hour to your lifespan? Verse 30, he says, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow thrown in the oven, will he not much more clothe you? Oh, you of little faith. These are all questions. And one thing that we have to understand about worry is that it will lead us to ask questions, but worry leads us to ask the wrong questions, which means we will get the wrong answers, which will then lead to more worry and we get caught in this crazy cycle. So for example, have you ever had someone ask you a loaded question? A loaded question is one that is complex in nature, but it already has assumptions built into it. And by answering the question at all, regardless of your response, confirms your acceptance with those assumptions even if that's not what you really mean. So Jesus was often asked a lot of loaded questions and this is why he often didn't answer questions. And sometimes he did answer questions, but when people were trying to trick him by asking these loaded questions, he often didn't answer at all because he knew they were loaded with assumptions that didn't align with what he believed in the first place. And so worry leads to questions like that, loaded questions that lead to a negative response and don't give space for God to be the solution or the answer. So for example, you're anxious and you think, oh no, what if this doesn't work out? You're already low key making the assumption that it won't work out and you're really trying to figure out what are you going to do. And so it puts a pressure on you and takes out the opportunity for you to see how God may actually work this out even without you. In Matthew 6, 31, Jesus says, do not be anxious saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? He's saying, don't ask these types of worried questions because they are loaded and they don't lead to the right answers because they're already making assumptions about God and his ability to provide. And that will lead us to be more anxious and to try to figure it out on our own or to just give up all together. Now that's what we don't want to do. What we want to do then is to really check the questions that we're asking ourselves when we feel anxious and worried. And we want to make sure that we're actually asking ourselves the right questions. So here are some questions that I found helpful to ask myself when I feel worried or anxious. Number one, what is going well that you can be grateful for. Often when we're, when we're worried or anxious, we expect something bad to happen, right? Or something actually might be bad happening in our life at the moment, but then worry will lead us to think that it's just always gonna be this way, it's never gonna get better, I don't know what to do. But when we take time to ask ourselves, 
wait a minute, how can I be grateful? It presents an opportunity for us to see how God is moving despite what might not be going the way that we want it to. And that's pivotal because God is the answer. <laughs> and we want to ask ourselves questions that are going to get our focus and our eye back on God. The scripture tells us that God gives perfect peace to those whose mind is stayed on him. Worry and anxiety is going to take our mind off of God by getting us to focus on what's happening wrong, what might not work out well, all the bad things. And so we have to jump off that cycle and say, wait a minute, what is God doing here? How can I still be thankful. When we go to Philippians 4, 6, this is another one of my life verses when it comes to anxiety that says, don't be anxious about everything, but in prayer, by thanksgiving, present your request to God, right? So we're supposed to be thankful because it helps us to get our focus back on God. The next question to ask when you're feeling anxious is, what do I have control of? Now, this is a really important question because a lot of anxiety and worry is really a pressure that we feel to control and do everything, that everything is our responsibility. And the truth is that it's not. There are certain things that we don't have control over and so we shouldn't worry about them because that does absolutely nothing. So what should we do then instead? Well, the next question to ask ourselves is, how can I pray about this? Again, Philippians 4, 6 tells us, don't be anxious, but to pray. I often love to say, why worry? when you can pray. So prayer is going to unlock God's power in your life to do what you can't, as opposed to you sitting back worried and pressured about trying to control something that you don't even have control over in the first place. And the last question that is helpful to ask yourself when you are feeling anxious is, how have you seen God move in your life? So this is actually more so being thankful about what God has already done in the past and reminding yourself that he can do it again. I love that in the text, and I think I mentioned this in last week's video, that Jesus points us to what we can see to encourage us in what we can't see. When he says, look at the birds of the air, look at the grass of the field, look at the wildflowers, right? Look at these things to see how God is taking care of them. He will do the same for you. Now you can do that in your own life. Think about how have you seen God move and provide and show up and give you victory in the past. Now trust and believe he's powerful enough to do it again. Asking the right questions can help change our perspective to see more clearly, to reframe our thinking so that we're getting the right answer and solution to all of our problems. And that answer is God himself. So if you are ready to get off the crazy cycle of worry, I invite you to watch this video where I teach more on this text in Matthew 6 on how to overcome worry. And for more encouragement, be sure to download my free Bible study called Worry Free to learn the three lies feeding your worry and the truth to set you free at belovedwomen.org. Thank you so much for watching today. And until next time, be beautiful, be blessed, and be loved.